I recently spent the winter break in beautiful Thailand, the land of smiles, where I had the opportunity to meet many people from different walks of life and for all, from all over the world. They included travelers, adventure seekers, and locals from the area, area as well. Whenever breaking the ice with someone that I had just met, the initial question most often asked was, where are you from? Today, we live in an age in which we are so connected to each other, regardless of the country of origin. So why do we still feel the need to ask people that we first meet, where are you from? I think we use this question as an icebreaker because it's an easy way for the person initiating the conversation to hopefully find something to relate to. Maybe what you find out can further spark a conversation to say, hey, I've been there before, or I know somebody that lives there. It's a simple question that anyone can ask and anyone can answer, and it can lead to something that we share in common as humans, to share a social dialogue with one another. What was my response to that question? It's that I'm from Canada, a country that possesses beautiful natural landscapes, friendly folk, and of course, maple syrup. However, soon after my reply, I always have to extend my answer and add that I actually haven't lived in Canada for the last nine years. Instead, I've been living abroad for roughly the same amount of time as I spent living in the country whose name is printed on the front of my passport. Personally, I feel a bit conflicted when answering that question. It's not that I'm not a proud Canadian. I am very aware of and grateful for the freedom and opportunity that my citizenship afford me. However, because I've been exposed to and been immersed in numerous cultures, I feel that I, excuse me, I feel as although I feel that I can identify with more than one country. I grew up traveling and going to international schools like so many of the people in the audience here today. Due to this fact, I identified myself with more than just a citizen from one country, but a citizen of the world. I've been fortunate to live overseas and be immersed in different countries and cultures, and I have taken part in adventures that just simply aren't to be found in Canada. So how can I simply be Canadian? When answering with a precise country, I feel that it doesn't paint the true picture of that, it, that reflects my personal experiences, such as my past or what my intentions are and hopes are for the future. Instead, it puts me in a category that fits the questioner's opinion of Canadians or of Canada, like their knowledge of the geography or of our prime minister. The name of the country on my passport doesn't define my personal identity. Yes, I do say sorry more often than most, and like many other Canadians, I also enjoy a nice serving of poutine. Telling you that m the country I'm from doesn't tell you that both of my biological parents are Filipino, or that I was raised by my stepfather who's Canadian, and that he's the only father I've known most of my life. It, ha it was he who provided me with the opportunity to be educated in Canada, in Saudi Arabia, in Australia, and Thailand. It doesn't tell you that I'm the first person on my maternal side to obtain a university degree in North America, and that I was in drama class in high school, or that I have a desire to go back to the country where I was born to help those who are, that are less fortunate. So, am I from Korea since it's the country that I've spent the second most abundant time of my life? No, because I have a car that identifies me as alien, but I have been here in Korea so long that I can safely say that I definitely do feel a connection with some of the Korean aspects, like their mindfulness with some protection. No, I won't go to the point where I would wear an Ajima visor, but <laughs> am I also Filipina? I enjoy the food and I feel a connection to the people, but unfortunately, I've forgotten how to speak the language. But I find myself wanting to learn more about their traditions. The question, where are you from, seems so definitive when you ask it, but in actuality, it needn't be. There are countless third culture kids like me who've been exposed to and immersed in multiple cultures whether it be exposure to different languages through TV, TV, education, multimedia, social networks, 
living abroad and living with somebody who is from a different country. Answering the question, where are you from, is indeed more difficult than it seems to be. And your response shouldn't solely be what it identifies you as, but rather it should be your collection of experiences and journeys that you've been on. Where I'm from includes locations and cultures that I've found comfort and happiness in. I found culinary delight in eating a simple plate of Italian pasta, relished in exhilarating hikes in the Swiss Alps, savored the many different types and flavors in Thailand, ridden along countless kilometers of Korean coastlines on the back of a motorcycle, and appreciated the kindness and sincerity of people. In my opinion, when attempting to break the ice by asking where someone is from, you should instead initiate a conversation by asking where people have been or where or what some of their cherished and most personal experiences are. Where am I from? I'm from several different corners of the, our world. My heart is partly Canadian, partly Filipina, partly Korean. I'm the sum of the adventures I've had and the people I've been fortunate enough to share them with. How about you? Thank you. Thank you.